Welcome to Kingdom Living Ministries, where our vision is knowing God, loving people, and making disciples. We trust this week's message will be a blessing to your life. Enjoy the teaching ministry of KLM. We're going to be reading out of Luke 19, verse 11 through 27. Verse 11 through 27. Luke 19. Say amen when you get there. Wave. I got one amen. That's good. Okay, two, three. Okay, we're getting up there. Amen. It says, <clears throat> and at, well, before I read, let me tell you, you know, Jesus spoke to his disciples in parables, right? And, you know, we, we, get, we get our word, English word parallel from this word that they use parable for, and it really means to throw alongside of, right? So when Jesus told the story that was a parable, it was to, to put it alongside a real life situation. It was to give a parallel example of something that really happens in real life. But the thing was, he said to the disciples, I speak to you in parables because the mysteries or the secrets of heaven are for you and you can understand them, but those outside cannot understand them, right? So you, to understand any parable, you have to realize that this is it's filtered through the word, it's filtered through the Holy Spirit, and this is the only way, this is the only reason they can understand the parables. The reason that the Jewish people could understand parables and the Gentiles couldn't is because of the Holy Scriptures that they studied. Right? So um, so a parable is something thrown alongside. So when you hear these, when you hear the words, you 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 know, it should be immediately related to what is this saying for me in my life? Because sometimes people say, what does this mean for somebody else's life? <laughs> what is what it means for me and my life? So Luke 19, 11 through 27. I'm sorry. Yeah, 20, 11 through 27 says, as they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, a nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return, calling tens of his servant. He gave them ten minas and said to them, engage in business till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, he received the kingdom. Having received the kingdom, he ordered the servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he may know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, and you are to be over five cities. And then another came saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept and laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit and you reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man taking what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank and at my coming, I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has 10 minas. I tell you that every, to everyone who has more will be given, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want to reign, me to reign over them, Bring them here and slaughter them before me. Thank God for the reading of the word. Oh, we're going to dismiss the children. God bless all the children. Father, thank you for the... Today, excited. <laughs> uh, Father, we thank you for the kids. Uh, pour out your glory upon them. Father, I pray that you'll help us to um, raise up a standard inside of them. So, Father, when the enemy comes... Like a flood, the standard of the Lord will raise up a standard against them, against him. And I thank you, Father, for helping us to train the kids in the way that they should go. And thank you, Father, for anointing Jessica and her team to minister effectively to these, these little ones so that the seed of your word can continue to grow, that when they're of age, Father, that they will remember Christ, they'll remember their creator, he told us in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, to remember our Creator in the days of our youth. So when the evil days come, we will be able to stand. And I thank you that these young ones 
Uh, we, we see into the future and we pray. We cover them in the, even in the future, Father. We go down 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 60, 80 <laughs> years from now that their lives will be covered by the blood of Jesus and that, that Lord, I thank you that the word that is sown today will have that type of effect all the way into eternity. That, Lord, I thank you that we, we will raise up godly children and that, it, that there will be no wild years, no, no years of sowing wild oats. I, I, I thank you, Father, that there won't be rebellious teenagers, but teenagers preparing for success spiritually, naturally, uh, Father, mentally, emotionally stable children, Father. Thank you, Father, for giving them godly friends, friends that will shape them and help provoke um, righteous peer pressure. And Father, I thank you for good friends and good people in their ears, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for their spouses. And Father, they won't connect with the wrong person. Deliver them from unreasonable wicked men and strange women and strange men. Set them free from that. And we destroy the works, the assignments of the enemy. And Father, we loose angels even to their future, that their future is smeared with favor and that great is the days ahead of them, Father. Thank you for protection and, and keeping them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Our kids' future are bright. It's bright. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Great things are ahead for our children. Amen. Amen. It's good to be back with you all. It's been a minute. Uh, I bring you greetings from heaven this morning. <laughs> Um, the Father wants you to know you are loved by Him. Amen. Amen. I, I got some uh, updates um, concerning our building, um, the building that we were looking at back down the street. Um, we did not get approved for the zoning for the building, all right? Um, so I actually got a chance to meet with the zoning officer. And so we, we're, we're grateful for that. How I many know delay does not mean denial? Right. <laughs> and so God has a place for us as a church, and he's working it out for our behalf, on our behalf. And we'll move in the right timing. And um, we're not moved by, we're not rushing. Uh, whenever I rush, I always make a mistake and miss God. God is never in a hurry. Yeah. He's slow, <laughs> according to us. And, um, and so I want you to know that um, though it looked like we lost, we actually won because we met with the zoning and he actually thought about a building that was mentioned to him two months prior. And in that building, he says, there's someone's look, they're looking for, you know, somebody to fill in that place. And um, he actually gave me his direct extension. He took my information. And as he remembers the exact location of that building, he's going to give me a call. But it's just so good to know there are a lot of churches that will sign a lease without doing the zoning. And they're locked in that um, lease. And many a times they lose their deposits. And he said that we were going to go and try to fight it. He said it costs like ten dollars to $15,000 just to go before the board. And nine out of ten, you will probably lose. Um, so God gave us favor. So I don't count it as a loss. It's actually a gain for us. God, I mean, we, we met, con connect, met a connection with the zoning officer. So that's a good, that's a good thing. Amen. Amen. So just one step closer and we'll move in the right timing. And uh, I'm excited. I'm encouraged. I wasn't like, oh, you know, what happened? Uh, when, you, when things don't go your way, you just get up, back up, and you keep moving forward. Right. And so it, it's not the end of the world. And there is a place for us. Amen. There's a good place for us. And even now, God is working out that place on our behalf. Amen. There's somebody, perhaps there's a building that um, there's been occupied right now or that's been standing by itself, and it's just waiting for the right time for us to walk into it. And it'll be perfectly set up, and it'll be the right amount of parking. So that was a key thing that we got, too, is the reason why it got denied is they didn't have enough parking. So um, whenever there's a building that's supposed to be for um, church gathering, oh, this is gone, whatever, to that, it's over there. I don't know what happened to it. And so um, whenever there is a um, building that is, is zoned for church gatherings, it has to have a significant amount of parking. And I said, well, we've been in this building for seven years. I was like, he said, I know, I know. I said, okay, we ain't going to talk about that. Favor. Favor. 
<laughs> so glory to God. So, um, yeah, we're going to let that slide. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so I just want y'all to know, be encouraged. God is working. He's doing some things and he's working on our behalf. Amen. And we still have, uh, have our faith in Jesus. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you. I speak not as a mere man, but as the oracles of God. I yield my tongue to the Holy Ghost, to my spirit. I commit my tongue to my spirit and I speak as, as your mouthpiece. And I thank you for the tongue of the learned. Thank you for divine supernatural utterance. Spirit of the living God, I thank you for rising up within me, for you have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to the rich, <laughs> to preach the, 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 the year of the favor of the Lord. To, Lord, you have anointed me afresh, Father. I thank you that the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. And I thank you that it's through him that I move and, and have my being. And I thank you that today will be a, a life-changing service. Um, I thank you for the word of God going forth with power and demonstration in Jesus' name. Give unto your people the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards them who believe. And we give your name, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the last two weeks, we've been talking about wealth building. How many have been blessed by that series? Yeah. We've been talking about um, um, a, a vision for increase and a vision for more. And today I want to give you a warning of some of the thing, the dangers when it comes to riches. So today's message is called Conflicting with Riches, the Dangers of Prosperity. Everybody say the dangers Amen. of prosperity. And so that needs to be something that we think about. Um, yes, it is God's will for us to be rich. I, I did not hesitate with that. Um, prosperity is a gift from the Lord, and God wants you to be extremely prosperous. He wants you to have more than enough. If you are only praying for your needs and no more, then you are a selfish person. God wants to bless you to be a blessing to somebody else. So if you're just concerned about your needs and not the needs of others, then you're going to realize how selfish you are. And um, so the problem is, is that he doesn't want the increase or the more to have us. So prosperity is God's will for every believer. And unfortunately, some believers can't handle the, the prosperity, can't handle the money. They can't handle the blessing. Some people will actually go to hell over money. And so people are praying to be millionaires. And if God was to do that, they will, they probably will walk away from the Lord. Yeah. So I want, to, I want us to qualify to receive the millions. Why not be a billionaire for the glory of God? He desires for us to be able to bless others. He wants you to be well off for his glory. The believer, whatever your lot is in life, um, you, you're supposed to work it and grow it. God has given us the ability to obtain wealth. You are anointed to get wealth, to establish his covenant upon the earth. He wants you to understand this covenant. But yet there are some warnings in the scriptures about money. Jesus warns us about the dangers of prosperity. Wealth is a beautiful thing. But, but if Christ isn't your Lord, it can be the death of you. God wants you to be extremely, I must keep saying it, God wants you to be extremely wealthy. So this is not an anti-prosperity message. So I just want to warn you that I'm at very much so for prosperity. Um, I was poor, <laughs> and, um, and, and poverty is not a beautiful thing. That I, I didn't go cl get closer to God because I was poor. We've been on welfare, and it's not, it didn't get us closer to God. <laughs> and those who would teach that poverty gets us closer to God, it, it, that's not true. I, I just came from Uganda, and I saw a lot of poverty, and there were people who did not know God. And it was not trying to get to know him. I've been around rich people who, loves God, who love God and want God. So I've been around rich people and I've been around poor people. 
And it's not the money that makes the difference. It's the heart. Mm, that'll preach. Yeah, that's enough for y'all to go home on. <laughs> All right, Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. I've been around sick people, and I've been around well people. And both sick people and well people, both, if they don't have a heart for God, they'll walk away from, they'll turn away from God. So health, you know, people are like, oh, this health, health and wealth. Okay, so you want a poverty and sickness. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't drive you closer to God. Now, granted, there are times when you don't have enough, you have a tendency to look out for God, reach out. Uh, prosperity sometimes will make you comfortable where you think you don't need him. And poverty will make you run to him because you need something more. Um, so I believe that there's a place that you can be prosperous and still want God more than you do right now. Proverbs 1, verse 32. Proverbs 1, verse 32 says, For the simple are, for the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency, compl complacency of fools destroy them. KJV says this, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Prosperity will destroy fools. James chapter 1, let's go over there, verse 9 through 11. James chapter 1. James warns the rich about the dangers of prosperity. And, and let's take a look at what he had to say to some rich people. And these were rich believers. So once again, God is not opposed for people who are rich. He's not opposed for them having the wealth. Verse 9 says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, and its flower, its flower falls, and the beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. So we, we, what do we take from here? Um, humility should be above all. We should go after humility. Humility is extremely important. And the glory of riches is fleeting. It's only temporary. So, you know, you can, ha you can have a lot of money and be sick physically and die so that money won't um, actually save you. Uh, Walt Disney, um, the founder of Disney World, Disneyland, he, he was very wealthy, but yet he died of a disease. And so we know that money cannot save us from sickness and disease. You can get the best medical care of the day, and yet without God's help, you, you could die. So the object today is to help you make Jesus, or put Jesus above everything. My goal is to, to help you to make sure as we grow into this wealth and grow in our finances, that Jesus is above everything. Conflicting with riches, the dangers of prosperity, again, is not an anti-prosperity message, but more of a warning. The word conflict means to fight, battle, to contend in warfare. So prosperity itself isn't a bad thing. The conflicting part is having, is having the resources, and, uh, which is have the, in fighting against the love of money. We should, we, should be, we should be very careful about how we use the word love. I used to say I love music. I like music a, a lot. Songs go through my head almost every single day. And sometimes when I'm sleeping, I hear songs in my dreams. I like certain movies, you know, mafia movies and different things. And, and, and yet I used to say I love them. But I've decided to only allocate the word love for God and for people. I think we should be very careful about how we use the word love. I love this food. I love that. I think that, that and then turn around and say, I love God. So we put in those things in the same category as God or above people. And so I want to challenge you to not use the word love so much, so loosely. We love God and we love people. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about we, us loving other things. So I want to encourage you to, to allocate those, that word to the Lord and to people. I don't love things, and I definitely don't love money. There is still a sinful nature within every believer. 
Though we are born again and we have the DNA of God, God is on the inside of us. We are his temple and we, have, we are partakers of his divine nature, according to 1 Peter. And yet there is a sinful nature in every last one of us. This nature will, ne will never be delivered from this nature until the day that we go to be with the Lord. Our spirits have received the nature of God and we have his nature on the inside of us, but the sinful nature is in our flesh. And that's the part of us that opposes the things of God. It is in that nature where the conflict with riches is. God wants you to be rich, and yet some of us don't qualify to be rich based on bad habits, wrong thinking about money, and the sin of greed that has not been dealt with. Proverbs 27, verse 20. Let's go over there. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 27, verse 20. The dangers conflicting with, with riches and the dangers of prosperity. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Shalod, um, Abaddon are never satisfied and never satisfied are the eyes of man. Shalom means grave of Abaddon. I think I'm not even saying it right. It, it actually means like uh, a place of destruction in hell. Those things are never satisfied. And we know from Isaiah that hell is in, enlarging herself. Hell is never satisfied. The grave is never satisfied. If you go to the graveyard, you'll see that it's never satisfied. There's always more death coming. And we know that people are dying by the moments. Proverbs 30, let's go over there, Proverbs chapter 30, and let's look at verses 15 and 16. It says, the leech has two daughters, give and give. <laughs> Three things are never satisfied, and four never say enough. Shalom, the, the, that speaks of the grave, the barren woman, and the land never satisfied with water, and the fire that never says enough. So we know that Gra the grave is never satisfied. We know that a woman who desiring to have kids, she's never satisfied till she brings forth life into this world. Some women, women who are desiring to bring forth that barren womb is crying out. And even as Hannah cried out to God, God answered it. She, will, she refused to say no, to take no for an answer. No matter what life dealt her and the, the offsprings of sin, she decided to go in for it. That lets me know that everything is not up to God in the sense of, oh, whatever your lot, just be satisfied with. She could have been satisfied with not having a kid, but she pressed in. You got to lean in. How bad do you want it? Lean in till you get your miracle. She got hers. That's the side note. That's a rabbit trail, by the way. So we got that rabbit. We cleaned it up pretty good. We chopped it up and, you know, we're eating it a little bit. Um, rabbit is really, really good, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, we, and we see that the land never satisfied with water. You pour water on the land, right? As you pour water on it, it just keeps soaking. It never, it's never satisfied. Now, if you get a plant and have that little beautiful little plant and you put water in it, you can tell enough, 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 because it has no place to go. But water within on the land, it just keeps going down. It's not enough. Um, think about fire. Fire just burns. <laughs> Everything that's in this lane, in front of it, it just burns. Everything beside it, it's not, never enough. Your flesh, your greed. Your, your sinful flesh, our sinful flesh, is, is never satisfied. The flesh is a mess, and you could feed it, and it will want more. You can get full, but, but the sinful nature is never satisfied. It wants more. And so if you don't deal with your sinful nature, it'll kill you. It'll take you to an early grave. It wants more money. Have you noticed the more you get, the more you want? That, that, that sinful nature. We, we, you know, you get a business, you got a little business, or you, you get a little promotion, and it's like that, there's a thing in, 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 in finances called um, lifestyle creeping. And, and what that is is like people get raises and promotions, and then all of a sudden what happens is their spending goes up. 
And so nothing has changed naturally, even though they got more money, that they're spending more than they that's coming in. So like I'll get ten thousand dollar raise. So we're gonna our lifestyle is gonna up. Lifestyle creeping, right? Lifestyle goes up ten thousand dollars more. And so now you don't really see the difference in that ten thousand dollar raise. So we gotta be careful. I I I, I remember that I, I I was a little kid. Um, early teens, preteen, little, and, and there was a ministry that wanted to create like a Disney for Christians, <laughs> and wanted to build. Such the, the the founders had such vision, wanted to provide like a Christian resort area, and the 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 man who was over it really had a vision. They said that his vision was so super large, and check this out. The ministry was bringing in a million dollars a week. Did y'all just hear that? A million dollars a week. And they said the more the money came in, the more the leader of that ministry wanted more vision. And he was spending more than a million dollars a week. He ended up going to prison. (laughs) And last I checked, he was selling stuff um, during the COVID and trying to get people, oh, Antichrist and you need water and stuff like that on television. And so all you got to do is Google that. I, I'm not going to mention no names. And so the more he got, the more he wanted. And so million dollars is, is to be enough. Some ministries don't even get million dollars every t- for 10 years. And yet a million dollars a week he was getting in the lifestyle kept going up. He kept dreaming more and more and more and more and more to a place. I mean, it's, it's okay to have vision, but, but you, got, you got to be satisfied with what God is giving you and in the sense of desiring for more, but you can't desire the world, right? <laughs> I believe Lucifer is an example of the praises coming through him. And he was an instrument of praise. He says, all right, I'm, I'm going to lead these angels and praise. And they started getting good to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh I'm beautiful. Oh, look. And, 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 and to the point where he wanted to be like the most high. And so you got to be careful about that sinful greed. Money uh, doesn't, you know, money doesn't necessarily, uh, is not evil. Doesn't make a person evil. It's, it's neutral. It's neither good or bad. And I said this a couple of weeks ago. It brings out what's inside of a person. Money does. The, um, the way you handle $5 is the way you'll handle $5 million. <laughs> What a sobering reality. Some people say, if I get, you know, people when we first started, it was like, oh, I'm going to win the lottery and I'm going to help you build a church. Well, if you don't, if you're not faithful in helping now, you're not going to be faithful when you get the million dollars, you know, or get the lottery. We've seen those cases where people get, win the lottery and what happens in a couple of years, they, they broke, right? Uh, we see celebrities, they'll get, um, they become well known and they're getting the money back in the day from record labels and next thing you know, they're, they're broke. So what, what's happening here? So it's not so much that money is evil, it's, it brings out what's on the inside of people. And so the money habits you have now will continue to grow. And so I want to encourage you to develop some good money habits so that when you're in position to receive more, you won't mishandle it. So let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. We're talking about the conflicting with riches, the dangers of prosperity, the dangers of prosperity. There is a dangerous side to having money. (laughs) And and again, this is not an anti-prosperity, so don't take the clip and run it. Oh, he hates prosperity. No, uh, I noticed that people like the vision of increase and the vision of more um, signs and graphics. I mean, it was a lot of likes and a lot of hearts. But then when it came over to the danger of prosperity, I got sometimes one or zero. (laughs) So so I I understand um, it it, it touches our flesh because nobody wants to hear uh, there's a dangerous side to it. Um, Mark chapter 4, verse 34, it says, In calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the world, the whole world, and forfeit his soul or lose his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me 
in my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, will the Son of Man also be ashamed and when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. So let's take a look at this. In order to follow Jesus, you have to first learn how to unfollow yourself. Unfollow the world and unfriend the world. Um, Jesus is saying de denying yourself is part of the Christian walk. Denying your desires. Deny so it doesn't matter what your, your, your desires are in the sense of your natural tendencies are. Jesus calls you to deny them. So if you're born, some of us are born with some desires, anger, anger is, I mean, anger desires, anger, I mean, just have a temper, whatnot. But it's not enough because that's your natural self. You're not to be okay and let, I just, I'm just me. No, you're just real carnal. I'm just being real. You're being real carnal as a Christian. So you, your attitude needs to be checked by denying yourself. You don't have any rights once you get born again. Your rights are now allocated to the Lordship of Jesus and his rights is Lord over your life. This is what it means to be in the kingdom. So it's not enough to have, you know, I naturally I'm shy. Well, God pushes you out of your shyness into boldness. So, so, so you, 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 I'm naturally I'm shy. Well, let the boldness be pushed upon you and let it push you out of your comfort zone. And maybe you, too, you talk too much. You were talking before the world, before Christ. And, you, and so let the, let the power of, of self-control come upon you and your words are few. So he, he, he pushes you out of your comfort zone, and those who've been out of the comfort zone since birth, he pushes you back into a comfort zone. So, so we see denying yourself is part of the Christian life, denying your selfishness and design, denying your thirst. Just because you're thirsty doesn't mean you need to yield to it. Just because you're hungry doesn't mean you need to yield to it. Because God sometimes calls you to fast. That's what it means to be a Christian. Whatever your desires, whatever your, your, your tendencies are outside of Christ, we're to uh, not allow our thirst. You know, there's a commercial, that says, obey your thirst. No, obey Christ. <laughs> outside of Christ, we're not to obey your desires. Just because you want to do it doesn't mean you should do it. Just because this is a thought, you shouldn't act on it. Are you with me? Just because the words come up doesn't mean you need to speak them. The Bible says be slow to speak and quick to hear. And so we see that there, there is a suffering, denying the desire for money, taking up your cross, a life of suffering, not suffering with poverty or sickness, but suffering in your flesh. Hebrews 5, 8 says this, that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. No, we know Jesus didn't suffer with sickness or disease or poverty, those things, but he suffered in his flesh. You have to put your flesh in check. Your flesh should not be the Lord over your life. Just because you feel like it doesn't mean you should obey it. Feelings. There's a lot of Christians going around living life based on feelings. I feel like this isn't right. Okay, so what? What does the Bible say about it? And so the Lord calls us to have a cross. The scripture, the scripture continues by telling us if we save our lives, we are to lose it. We're going to lose our life. Um, if we lose our lives, we're going to save our lives. This is why sometimes the kingdom of God is called the upside down kingdom. It, it, it causes us, if, in other words, if you're going to be first, you got to be last. And in order to be last, you're going to be first. And so we see the scripture telling us that, hey, if you want to save your life, you got to lose your life. And if you want to lose your life, keep saving your life. And so we, we need to be mindful of those things. We're to lose our lives for the gospel of Jesus Christ. What, what does, let, let's take it, bring it home. Uh, not taking that job that pays more in order to, to be in church every Sunday. Or to be a missionary to India and lose the comfort of your life. To not following your sinful desires, but following the God-given desires. How do we lose our lives? Honoring the Lord with our money by tithing and giving offerings and giving to others. Losing the world's way of doing things for the kingdom of the way of doing things. Losing that extra money to send your Christian kids to, to, to send your kids to a Christian school because you know what's the dangers of a secular school. Um, 
for example, the building, we, we didn't get approved for the building, but guess what? Because of the zoning, but we lost to win. Sometimes you lose to win. You got to come back to go forth. And so we lost. Um, you know, the guy took my name and, and he, he knows my name now. He knows that we exist beyond just the paper. And sometimes there's disappointment, but we know that, that we rejoice because faith and patience, they inherit the promises. And then Jesus continues, says, what would it profit you to gain the world and lose your soul? Talking about gaining the world. I mean, some of us, we, we, we're, we're living for a paycheck. We're living to gain the world. We want the world. We want, especially in social media, climate, uh, uh, we, we, climate we, we, we want more likes. We want our videos to go viral, thinking that that's some money to it. Um, we want the popularity. Sometimes we want the love. When people like and send the hearts, oh, they love us. They don't love you. Some people you don't even know. <laughs> They're playing with your emotions. <laughs> Um, how do you lose your soul? Losing your soul is simple. It's losing your ability to choose Jesus. When you die, you, you lost your ability. You lost your ability to make a choice to follow him. So how do you lose your soul? By dying in a state that you of, of unrepentance. And, and you, you choose your, 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 uh, your ability to, to be saved is cut off. When Lucifer and those angels decided to rebel against God, they lost their ability to serve God. So no longer will Lucifer be Lucifer. Now he's Satan. He, he's, he's dark. The, the light that he had was, is no longer. And so some people once, I once heard somebody, oh, they're praying for the devil to get saved. It's impossible. His decision is, is, is done. It's sealed for life. And, and those who die, leave this world, their decision is, is sealed forever. The world isn't worth losing your soul over. You, you have to want Christ more than anything else. The object of Christianity is about feeding your flesh, but going hard after God because he went hard after you. Sometimes people are, are you know, they're on the phones and, and they're playing games while in church. They're not losing their life. They're, 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 they're actually feeding their flesh. Christianity isn't about a, a God fulfilling our desires but for us to fulfill his desires. He prospers us for his purposes, not for ours. Lose our life, lo losing our lives and denying ourselves and picking up our cross to follow him daily. This is a daily requirement. God wants your life. Let me say it again. God wants your life. He wants every part of you, not just your heart, not just your Sundays, but he wants you every day. He wants every moment. He wants every thought. He says, keep your mind, present tense, keep your mind stayed upon him. Keep your mind. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He wants all of, all of you. He, um, God is not, is, is, is concerned about, he, he wants your heart. He wants your thoughts. He wants your love. He wants your attention. His name is Jealous. He's a jealous God. I thought jealousy is wrong for you. But for the God who created you is not wrong. He sets the standard. He can be jealous over his creation. He is jealous over you. He doesn't want anybody to have more of you than he does, including your spouse or your children or your loved ones or your job or your money. He wants all of you. He calls you to himself. He summons you to his son so he can save you and then gives you his spirit so he can sanctify you, set you apart for his glory. He created you for him. So our motive should be everything for him. We lose, the PD is losing weight for him. So I can preach six services in a day, every day, if I wanted to, if he called me to. Come on. He wants me to be around longer. But how many know if you don't take care of your body, <laughs> that giving the devil a place, I'm going to take him out. Why did he die? He was such a godly person. But he was ungodly in his habits of eating. <laughs> Why did he lose the house or lose the car? Ungodly in the habits of spending. Sometimes we, we, we want to think ungodliness allocated to sinful or sexual activities. But, but it's, it's more, more than that. She, he lost their mind. Why did they lose their mind? They were such a godly person because they were undisciplined in their thinking. 
they allowed the devil to get a hold and they thought everything was about them. And when they came to church, hey, they looking at me or they were on social. They don't, they hate it on my post. You know, they go, 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 go. <laughs> And politically, you're not supposed to say crazy. They went insane and it, and it allowed the devil to mess with their mentals. <laughs> they need a counselor. They need more than a counseling. They, they open the door. See, you can open the door even as a Christian to the devil. Yeah. He can come inside, not inside of your spirit, but inside of your mind. It starts with a thought. The reason why some of us have bad, some of y'all have bad dreams. Let me correct you. Some of y'all have bad dreams is because before you go to bed, you have bad thoughts. And that, that the, thought, the thought life is a, it's an opportunity for the enemy to come in. None of that was on the notes. <laughs> Um, God, uh, some people will much. God would much rather for some people to be poor and serve Him than for them to be rich and forsake Him. So you got to check your heart. Go over to Luke twelve. I got a couple of scriptures. Glory to God. Luke chapter twelve. We're talking about conflicting with riches, the dangers of prosperity. Luke chapter twelve. And 13, uh, we see that this man, let's read it real quick. It says, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide. Y'all read this? Was this the scripture y'all read today? Okay, good. Um, tell my, te- my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, take care and be on your guard against what? <laughs> So you thought that being covered is it's, it's like a, a slight sin. But he says, guard against all. So that there's some, some of that, that that's beyond that. It says, for, one, for one's life does not consist, consist in the abundance of his possessions. Your identity is not what you have. It's who do you have? Whose are you? And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentiful and thought to himself, what shall I do for what I have I no worth for, excuse me, what shall I do for I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and, um, and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat and drink and and be merry. But God said to him, fool. <laughs> the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So this guy said in his heart, there is no God. In other words, I rely more on my riches than I do God. Fool. <laughs> you want to talk about a fool? A fool is somebody who thinks that God is a concept. This night, your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. It is possible for you to work all your life for your retirement for somebody else to have it. Now, I'll never forget this. I was, uh, when I was pastor of Budweiser, and, and this guy, he was like, he, he, he said, hey, Dwayne, you know, I, I can't wait. I've been working here 25 years. And then shortly after I left, he, um, they told me he died. He had, he had like another year or so, worked all of it. I think he was a millionaire because of the stock. He put money in there back in the day when it was open. And he died before he was able. He worked. He was working seven days a week. Sometimes he'd be in tra- the, um, the um, lift. What's that? Tractor trailer? Um, uh, uh, what's, Fort Lift. Because he, be, he worked so much. He was looking for that day of retirement. Somebody else got it. His wife, perhaps she got married again. So the new husband or the kids that he did not have a relationship with who are mad, they're mad at him because he was always working. Perhaps the government took it, though. The company took it. Oh, praise the Lord. We're betting on people not retiring. The dangers of going after the money. You're sacrificing time with your little kids for your business, all in the name of providing. They'll grow up and they don't know that you love them because you're, you're never there. They don't know. They don't see. Uh, he's a, he was a provider. She was a provider. But, they, you know, that was it. I 
Our lives does not consist in the abundance of earthly possessions. Do not allow things to give you your identity. Yes, go after what God has given you, but don't get caught up in those things, those blessings. Go after the blesser and not the blessing. Go after the giver, not the gifts. He must be our everything. Don't love this life, but love the life giver, Jesus. Don't get too comfortable down here. Heaven is your home and earth is our our assignment. And money is the means to fulfill our assignments. Thank God for providing for us and giving us the earth to reign on and walk in favor and abundance. It's like people who are in love with the ideal of marriage, but in the ceremony, but not the person. The wedding, that's how people are with the earth. They love this earth. They, they, the wedding is about every, you know, oh, how I feel. This reunion of mom and dad and relatives, uncles that you don't like, cousins, you don't like coming to it and, and having a good time and you providing the bar for them to get drunk on. Um, and, and, and you know, <laughs> the wedding isn't about how it makes you feel or the reunion that comes as a result of the wedding, but it's about the love between the man and the woman, the wife and his wife. The reception is cute, but it's, it's about the person. Don't love the gift and the gifts, but love the giver, right? So people love, I, I'm in love, I'm in love. But, 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 you know, but they really love the concept. Oh, it's gonna, I'm going to be sharp. I'm going to look good. You know, they love that. And that's how people are when the possessions, they love the possessions. It's just the wedding. It's just a rehearsal. All this stuff right here, you can have the biggest house, the finest car and have a chef could cook you the finest meals. It's just a rehearsal. That food, you know, thank God for the food, but the food was not meant. You, I mean, your, your whole life is not meant just so you can enjoy the food. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the extra, the benefits. Amen. So this message about wealth building, it's not, oh, I'm going to have money. Money comes to me now. Come on, money. Come on, money. And it's not about you. He's going to give you the money so you can do what he called you to do. So you can set your kids up to, to, for, for them to do what he called them to do. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saving this money for, for the world to have you. <laughs> so, some people they, I'm, I'm, I'm storing up I'm going to have a legacy of wealth and then your kids the devil got a hold of so now you're saving money for the devil oh, Lord. Oh. what's that? that's utterance uh-huh. alright Matthew chapter 6 verse th- 24 Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 no one can serve two masters For either he will hate the one or love the other. He will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot love and cannot serve God and what? Come on, read it. Money, money, money. money. (laughs) You, You cannot love God and money. It is impossible. Everybody say impossible. (laughs) Impossible. That sounded good. (laughs) Um. King James says, Mammon, um, you, Mammon is a dangerous master. You cannot love money and, and you can love money and not have any of it. I know we want to allocate to the rich people. Y'all talking about me when you say rich. <laughs> I, I know you want to allocate that, but you can not have money and still love it. It's all about the bag, right? That, that's, that's, that's the lingo. The bag. You're going after the bag. That bag could get a hole in it. <laughs> Just like Haggai. And you, you, you're putting money in, it's going right out. Uh, regardless of your financial status, you can serve God and he can promote you to wealth. People make decisions all the time based on money. Let, let's talk about this. People will move their families across the world for money. They will move across the seas for money. They miss church for money. They'll leave a church where the word is, where the God has been taught and they're being fed and they're growing in the things of God for another church in order to make money. Now, it's amazing that people will judge the pastor. Let's say a church of a larger size wanted PD to come and be their pastor. So I take my lovely family 
and we go and we move. And then it's like, huh, keep moving for money. But yet there are people in the congregation who will move and leave the church and move to another state for some money. And yet judge the pastor when another opportunity comes. I'm not saying that to cop, so calm down. I'm not going anywhere soon. At least I don't think. <laughs> I'm, setting, I'm setting y'all up. Oh, man, he's about to leave. Somebody's about to call. Bishop Jake's about to call PD. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but it's amazing people will judge the pastor for that. I, but musicians. Oh, we ain't, and I'm not talking about anybody from here. I'm, I'm saying, like, they, they will leave, leave a church. Oh, you saved me. Oh, you taught me the word. Oh, thank you. But this other church, they, they paying me more. They, 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 got, they got it on. I mean, they paying for, I mean, if we volunteer, if we think about volunteer for cameras, we're going we're gonna to pay you. It's amazing, people, how people base their lives on money. They make decisions based on money. People will not have kids based on money. This is loving mammon, money more than they know. Forget the will of God, but if it isn't in the budget, we make the decision. Now, I'm not against budgets. All right, by the way, I'm not against, we, we've got some things in plan for, for discipleship and budgeting and money. There is a place for it. But don't let the budget run and rule your life when it comes to the will of God. Budgets are needed and they, need, they, they have their place. But we cannot love the budget more than Jesus. Let me give you an example. The Lord led me to go to Uganda. I had no money to go to Uganda but my yes caused the money to come in. Um, in the past, there were some days I remember the Lord calling us as a church um, to move from South Cent um, lower, Upper South Jersey to, to Piscataway. And we were at the hotel and it was like $600 a week for two conference room. And sometimes we would get $100 a, a week in the offer. And it was six. So we were lacking 500, and yet in the mail, somebody would send the money that we needed. So we went based on the call, not based on the budget, because it didn't make sense. People get upset about people buying fancy cars, you know, and a million dollar toilet or three thousand dollars for a leash for their dog. By the way, we don't have a three. I bought a. I think I paid three dollars for the leash of the dog Uganda leash. You know, she looked like she's from Africa now. <laughs> uh, but sometimes people will buy a leash for a dog for $3,000 and people will get upset and talk about them. It's none of your business what they do with their money. Are you, are you with me? That's a love of money. If I had that money, how dare them buy that much, spend that much on an animal or a car or their school or the education of their kids? That's the love of money. Let me tell you what that is. That's Judas. Spirit of Judas. Judas got upset because the woman broke the alabaster box, which was like a lifetime, what was that? A life earnings for Jesus' death. Got upset. And that's when it started. He, he wouldn't. He says, how much you'll give me for him? The love of money. You see how you can love money and not have it? Talking about what other people are doing with their money. So what if I decided to rent the Rutgers Stadium for a youth conference and it costs millions? So what? If God told me to do it, what's, what's priority? We, we got to guard against that. We got to guard against saying that they have, they shouldn't use that for that. Don't talk about what other people are doing with their money. Be concerned with what God's called you to do. I believe it's God's will for PD to fly first class or business class. So I'm using my faith for such. And, so, and let me tell you, business class going to Uganda is, is about $3,000 and some change. Regular economy class is like, you know, six, seven hundred, maybe eleven $1 hundred. Uh, why is he spending that for that? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long flight. Thank you. Some will have a fit. Some will act like, oh, God is broke. When God tells us to do something, 
it may not make sense naturally. I'll give you another example. Some of y'all know about this. I wanted to be a teacher, English teacher. And uh, one reason, because I love young people. Um, and two, I, I can make some money for us to get out of debt real quick. My wife believed and confirmed, if you, if you agree with this, my wife believed with all her heart that that was not the will of God. And I'm like, oh, God, no, it has to be. She said, but I support you. But I don't believe it's, it's the ways of the Lord. Naturally, it did not look right. It, it Naturally, it, 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 you know, it didn't make sense. If an opportunity for me to make more money to get out of debt quicker, it, that's the will of God, right? But your logic can get in the way of the will of God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, do not lean to your own understanding, but in all your ways, and, uh, uh, trust him with all your heart and, and, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he should direct your path. So we, we got to make sure the Lord is leading us and not our logic. I had the Lord tell me one time to leave a good paying job to go to a lesser paying job. That didn't make sense. As a result of that job, I have some great friends as a result of being at that job. Thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. Just because it's more money doesn't mean it's God. So many are led by money, and that is their Lord and Master. We're talking about the dangers of prosperity. People will make decisions, career decisions based on money. I'm not saying not to, but I'm saying don't let that be your only source. Of, of inquiry, like you, you're inquiring of the Lord and not the, the, what's the, what they're going to pay you. I do not make decisions based on money, more or less. I follow the Lord. I don't tithe when it's convenient. I tithe because it's right and it's the Lord. I would not be in full-time ministry because of money. We live for God and not money. Working overtime is a way, everybody say a way, for the Lord to increase you. But it isn't the only way. There are times I remember I didn't sign up. I was known the guy who didn't sign up for overtime because I had a speaking engagement on the weekend. I, no, I, I need my time. And sometimes you, you have to follow that. Follow the leadership of the Lord. Be open for the, be, be open for the Lord to check you. Um, free isn't always God. We got a situation right now because it was free. It cost us more. Free isn't always God. Discounts are, all, are always the Lord. Sometimes the Lord wants us to pay more. I said it. Sometimes the Lord wants you to pay more. <laughs> Expensive isn't always the way either. But the answer to a million questions is to be led by the Lord. To be led. We're not to live by prices. We're not to live by discounts or reviews, but oh. the Lord, oh. but the Lord, because the Lord will lead you to buy something that everybody's saying the reviews are horrible or working at that job, working at a job. And they saying that this person is, is a horrible person to work for. Well, that's their experience, not yours, because you got favor on you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they may be hard for you, but they, they working for me. So we, we, got, we got to make sure. Never be led by price or cost. We're to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything. We should pray and check our hearts and look for the inner witness. Just because there's more money doesn't mean that it's the Lord. <laughs> Let's stop looking at our jobs as our source or the bank accounts. Don't be ignorant about those things, but at the same time, don't lean on them. There will be times it will cost you more to be led by the Lord, but it pays more in the end. So stop looking for something for less or cheap. How many have bought some cheap things and you wish you like, wait a minute. I know I used to buy stuff from this one person. I'm going to say at Walmart. But I would go to Walmart, think I was buying from like the like New York, whatever. Thing. And my wife's like, no, there's a better way. Go to Target. Go to Ross. <laughs> there's other things. Berlin the Coke Factory. Walmart is cute, but there's something greater. Amen. Some of y'all like, well, that's low for me too, Tarjay. <laughs> but how many know the, the? Sometimes you get what you pay for, and quality is worth everything. Yeah, you may get the cheap shoes at at certain places and hurt your feet, and then you got to go to the foot doctor. <laughs> oh, what happened? I, you know, you know, it was cheap. Yeah, it was cheap, but it cost you. 
So sometimes the Lord will leave. Sometimes we love money so much, we're looking for everything cheap. Yeah, we love money. I, I, oh, I, I love a sale. You uh, really? <laughs> Don't be moved by sales. They, you know, they they put it on sale today. Like this is the last time, <laughs> and a year later, the last time, and a year later, the last time. I mean, when is it gonna go out? <laughs> Christmas in July, <laughs> and then come Christmas, they put the same sales on. Don't be led by those things. Now, I'm not saying don't go get in debt. I'm not saying that. But sometimes he will lead you to buy more. For pay, pay for it more. Amen. We want to, don't always look for the discount. What can you get me? Give me the pastor's discount. <laughs> no, no, because I don't want anybody to think they owe me anything. Well, Abraham says, you know what? I don't want your money because I don't want you to say that you made Abraham rich. The Lord made me rich. That's what he said. So sometimes God will lead you to turn down money. Did you hear me? Somebody offered to pay my education. I turned it down. I didn't want them, and I have debt now, but I didn't want them to say, I paid for your education. You owe me. Amen? All right, a couple more scriptures. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Time is getting away. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's go that real, real quick. 1 Timothy chapter 6, my last scripture that we'll look at, and then I'll give you some takeaways. The, the Conflicting with riches. So we know there's some poor people who love, more, m- love money more than some rich people. And we know that some rich people who love money more than some poor people. And so we got to be careful, guard our hearts. Don't, you know, don't always think cheap. Don't always, you know, you should have a vision for more. But how many know there's a process? Everybody say a process. We don't trust the process. We trust the God of the process. Let's correct that. Because Chris is going, I trust, trust the process. Trust the process. No, the process will fail you. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I got excited about that. Um, let's look at verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many sin- senseless and harmful desires to plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through, these cra- through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Let's take a look at this. Notice that Paul is instructing Timothy, says, you know what? It is through great gain, it's great gain with contentment and holy living. So there should be an element of, as we go after for more, there should be an element of contentment. You got to be content in whatever state you find yourself in, be content. Learn the secret that whether you have a lot or you have a little, you are content. Be grateful. Be thankful. Um, With holy living, that is. Another thing that Paul is telling his son in the faith, he says, we brought nothing into this world. And it's a certain thing. We're going to take nothing out. So you may have a nice coffin. And you can tell them, put, all, put my favorite things in there. We're not taking any of that. It's just going to rot. So give it to somebody else, right? I'm telling you, it is certain we brought nothing into, we didn't bring anything into this world. We came naked, we're going to leave naked. We can't even take the clothes, our clothes. Or, or whether, you know, you got a, a surgery. You can't take that into the next life. You know, whether, you can't take that. It doesn't matter. You can get your nose fixed up. Yep, just for the funeral. You came from dust, you're going to turn into dust. Because in a few months, few months, if we open it up, it, what's going on? You're going to stink. No matter how much you, I got cologne, expensive clothes. Shh, it, it, it don't matter. That's going to fade away. I'm going to be stinking. Even at Lazarus. But, you know, we don't want to go get him because, master, he stinketh. You, you and I are going to stink. I don't care how much you don't like being stinking. You're going to stink. When you die, your body's going to rot. You no matter what you get done on your teeth, you got the caps, you got the root canals, you got the false teeth in, all that in. But guess what? It, it, it's not gonna matter. I'm not saying not get those things, by the way. I'm not against those things. Anything to help to preach the gospel. But but at the same time, just know we ain't gonna take them with them. Oh, like, look at my gold. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Let's take it out right before they leave. <laughs> I'm sorry. Another thing that he was, he was exhorting is to, to be thankful what you have. 
Then he turns around. He says, if you desire to be rich, you're, you enter soul dangers. There's nothing, there, there's nothing wrong with being rich. But when you crave to be rich, there's harm ahead of those who wanting money more than anything. The love of money will lead you away from the love of Christ. Let me say that again. The love of money will lead you away from the love of Christ. You cannot love money at all. For it's all kinds of evils with the love of money. It's a dangerous thing. The Bible actually talks about Mark 4, verse 19. It talks about the, the, the deceitfulness of riches. Riches will deceive you in believing that you got more power than you do. The Bible actually says power belongs to the Lord. I heard, I heard Snoop, Snoop Dogg say that recently. Uh, power belongs to the Lord. That's out of Psalms, right? So we got to be careful about loving something that God forbids us to love. You and I are not designed to love money. It comes and it goes. Sometimes you may have a lot. Sometimes you may have a little, but don't love it. We, we, we desire to have increase, but we don't love increase more than we love God and people. We, we're, to, we're to have a vision, but we don't love the vision more than the vision, the one who gave us the vision or the, the vision that is to serve the people that it's called to serve. We're to love God. So the love of money will always lead you away from the love of Christ and people. How many funerals that you know of people fighting over the, the benefits, you know, the, the death, you know, like, hey, what did mama leave? What did daddy leave? Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm going to get the car. I'm going to get the makeup. I'm going to get the earrings. I'm gonna, you can't take any of that with you. So some people would rather destroy relationships than to give up. Okay, you can have it. I got mama in my heart. I got the memories. I got the phone calls. I was with mama. I called her. I took care of her. So go ahead and take what you want. Sometimes we got to love God and love your brothers and sisters and cousins and nephews and nieces more than the things that the person you're fighting over leaving behind. You want that? Go ahead and have it. Like Lot and Abraham. Go ahead. Because you know what? Sodom and Gomorrah, judgments come in that area. <laughs> you know what happened right Yeah, Go ahead, Lot. I'll take this. I'll take the most. And then judgment came. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not saying calling judgment on your relatives. Lord, I'll get you. All right. All right. Real quick. Um, give me 10 more minutes. A minute for each point. Actually, 11 minutes because I got 11 points. How to deal with conflict. <laughs> how, how to deal with conflicting, with conflicting with riches and the dangers of prosperity. Let's go. So I, I sent this ahead of time. So we're going to do one. First one is real simple. Love God regardless of your financial status. That's Matthew 20, 20, Matthew 22 and 27. Love God regardless of your financial status. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Number two. He's going to put it. It's up there. It's going to come in. Love people above money. Love people above money. Matthew 22 and 28, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you got to love God regardless of your financial status. No matter if you have a lot or you have a little, your love for God should not change. That is not your identity in your finances. Yes, you may go play golf with the richest man in your community, but that is not who you are in Christ. You are saved because of the blood. And the same blood that was shed for you who are not rich it is the same blood that's shed for the rich man. Amen. Love people above money. Regardless of your status, you got to love people. Well, you know, sometimes people just, they, they, they have that clout about them, right? They, they think, oh man, you know, but you can't love it more than you love people. The next one is you got to beware of deceitfulness of riches. Beware of the deceitfulness of riches. Riches will make you think you're God. Let me say it again. Riches will make you think that you're God. The next one is, is, is coming. Um, look at money with eyes of eternity. Look at money with eyes of eternity. That's Luke chapter 16, verse 9. It talks about making friends with um, unrighteous mammon. Uh, we have to see money the way God does. 
It is a means, to, and which leads me to the next one. Uh, money, use money as a means and not an end. Use money as a means and not an end. Use that money to be a blessing to a bunch of people. Amen. The next one, never make decisions based on money. <laughs> That's a big one. That should hit everybody in this room. Never make a decision. Never make decisions based on money. <sighs> okay, what, what do you mean? I want to move in a certain area. I can't afford that. But if God gave you a desire to move in that neighborhood, now he says, okay, now it's time for you to utilize your faith to move in that area. Never make, and I'm not telling you to get over your head, but I'm saying if the Lord is prompting you to believe him for an area that naturally you can't afford, you should go with it. Or the Lord leads you to an area that you can afford, but you don't like the neighborhood. So it's the other stream, right? I don't think the schools are, are the best. I'm not saying not make decisions based on that, but at the same time, what are we being led by? Money or the schools or the Lord? All right, um, the next one is to sow towards the spirit more than sowing towards the flesh. Sow towards the spirit more than sowing towards your flesh. That means you, you, you're prayed up, you're in the word of God, and you're worshiping and you're attending church. You're sowing towards the spirit more than just the greed that's trying to creep in. I got four more. And they're still not up, but they're coming. <laughs> Become a giver beyond tithing. The tithe is not really giving. It's, it's actually, it's the foundation, it's the floor of your giving. So some people are just satisfied with tithing. You got to become an offering giver. You got to offer, give, give, give offerings to the Lord. Be a giver in every area of your life. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, God loves a cheerful giver. So when you go out to eat, if you can't afford the meal, don't, I mean, you can't afford the tip, don't go out to eat. Amen. If you can't afford to tip, don't go out to eat in that particular restaurant. Go to Chick for Heaven. <laughs> you don't have to tip. <laughs> All right. Um, the next one. Learn contentment. Learn contentment. How to deal with conflicting, conflicting with riches and the dangers of prosperity. Learn contentment. Are you content? I'm not saying that you got to be satisfied with where you are, but you got to be content. You got to learn how to be at peace. And, and if, God forbid, nothing changes, you love God regardless. Just because he doesn't answer, answer, answer your prayer the way you want it to be answered doesn't mean that you should not be ongoing loving him. You got to be so content with God and that if you're in that apartment until Jesus comes, you're okay with it. If you're with, in your, with your mama, your daddy, until Jesus comes. Oh, you're in the neighborhood that you don't like until Jesus comes. You got to love Jesus regardless of your circumstances. If you find yourself with nothing but your underwear, you thank God and you love him regardless. Come on. That's the kind of faith we need. That regardless of what happens, regardless of my prayers being answered, all my confession, I'm going to love him regardless. Whether I get the promotion or not, whether I'm the next in line or not, I'm going to love him. My love for him is not going to change based on my circumstances. Whether, whether, whether things are going well or whether everything around me dies, I'm still going to love him. Yeah, you slay me. I still hold on and trust you. And I still believe you. And I still trust you. If I die in faith, that's the only way to die anyway. So if I die not receiving my healing and receiving the promises, it's okay. If I die without seeing revival, it's okay because I love him regardless. My life is not based on revival, not based on whether I get promoted or raised or become wealthy or become well known. I love him regardless. And you got to have that kind of faith. You got to set your eyes on Jesus and not look any other way. Says, I'm going to remain. I will not be moved. I will not be moved from my faith in Jesus. I love the Bible, whether I understand it all of it or not. I'm going to stay and I'm going to remain faithful to Him. And that's the kind of heart that you got to have. That's you're going to fight against 
um, the dangers of prosperity, that I love him. Regardless if everything's okay or not. Whether, regardless of if I'm in the hospital, barely being able to breathe, I was there. And yet you still love him. I was homeless. At one point I was homeless. And yet I still loved him. Are you with me? One time I was the black sheep of my family. And I still loved him. I was fat and overweight. And I still loved him. Come on. You got to have that kind of faith. And say, I'm not going to be moved by what I see. I'm going to be, I'm going to remain faithful to God. I'm going to pray in tongues regardless of my circumstances. Even if the mountains don't move, I still going to praise him. Even if I'm the mountain. And that ties into my my next one. Jesus over everything. (laughs) Jesus over everything. Paul says, "I, I suffer all to gain Christ. To gain Christ. I'm not coming to Christ for money. Because you can get money without Christ. I come to Christ for him. Thank God you might have got saved because you didn't want to go to hell. But do not stay there. Your love for him should go, go beyond um, life insurance or eternal, eternity insurance. Now it's going to be afraid of, fear, of, afraid of the fire to a holy fear of God. I got saved because my life was a wreck. But now I love him regardless of my life. Jesus over everything. Everybody say Jesus over everything. Jesus, Jesus, whether he he or she leave you or whether your kids act up or not, you're still going to love him. You're still going to love him. All your friends turn their back on Christ. You're still going to remain faithful. Come on. That's the type of faith we're talking about. That is the number one way to fight against the dangers of prosperity. That he's going to prosper you. I'm going to tell you, he's going to make you wealthy for his glory. But you don't serve him for the wealth. You serve him for who he is. That you're so in love with him that you're not going to be moved by money. So when you get it, you you know what to do with it. You'll become a distribution center. If he can get it through you, he can get it to you. So he wants to, he wants you to be a funnel. For that glory of his finances, for, for, the, for the wealth of the nations, for the healing of the nations, he will use you to fund his business. Jesus over everything. My last one. Ask the Lord to lead you when it comes to money. Galatians, ask the Holy Spirit, excuse me, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you when it comes to money. Galatians 5.16 says, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Spirit of God will never lead you to feed that sinful nature. He will always lead you in line with the fruit of the spirit. Self-control. It's on sale. So what? I'm not moved by sales. Who do you think this is? I'll buy the whole store if he wants me to have it. (laughs) You got to think like that. And if I don't get it, it's okay. If I miss the sale, it's not the end of my life. <laughs> oh, you missed out with the free money, the, the, the um, stimulus checks. It's okay because that's not your source. Most people don't have that money. It's gone. <laughs> and you might have been part of that statistic. <laughs> it's okay. Amen. If you're here, you don't know Jesus. Jesus is better than money. Jesus is everything. He died in your place. He's the lover of your soul. You may you might have think you had a lot of lovers, but Jesus is the real lover. He loves you so much that he gave his life for you. You and I have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and there's nothing that we can do to make things right with God within ourselves. But there was a man who died in your place and, and squashed the beef between you and God. His name is Jesus, the man, Christ Jesus. He is the mediator. You can't get to God unless you go through him. Jesus said it like this. I am not. Notice this. He used the definite article. I am the way, not a way. I am the life. I am the light. I am the life. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl can get to the father unless they go through him. And today's your day. Your day for the greatest miracle of your life. The greatest miracle there is, is to, for a man or woman to be born again. To receive Christ. And the Spirit of God takes this heart of, 
of stone and give him a heart of flesh. And he does, the Spirit of God does a, a surgery on his heart and changes that person on the inside and qualifies them to receive the Holy Spirit. Today, if you're here and you say, Pastor Dwayne, I'm not born again. I want to give my life to Christ. I want you to be bold enough and brave enough to raise your hand and say, that's me. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Today is your day. Is there one? Say, Pastor Dwayne, I once was walking with Christ, but I've walked away. I'm out of fellowship. I want to come back home. I want you to be bold and brave enough to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to come back to Father's house. Father is waiting for you. Father God longs, Jesus is interceding on your behalf, and he longs for you to be part of his family once again. You walked away. You, you walked out of the Father's house and into the world, and now he's calling you back to his house. He says, come home, son. Come home, daughter. Today, today, I want to reclaim your soul. Is there one who says, I want to rededicate or reaffirm and renew my faith in Christ? Is there one? The third invitation is, he said, Pastor Dwayne, I want to receive this Holy Spirit. I want to receive the baptism and pray, be the, have the ability to pray in tongues. I cannot pray in tongues. God gave us a heavenly language so that we can pray on an intimate level with him. And praying in tongues is a way for your spirit to tell the Father how much he is in you and to you that is beyond your natural ability. And you cannot speak in tongues and would like to speak in tongues. I want you to be bold enough to raise your hand. My last invitation, he says, Pastor Dwayne, I am not, I don't have a church home, but I believe that this is my home. Our church is imperfect. We serve a perfect Savior, and, and God is calling you to the house of the Lord. There's something about being connected with brothers and sisters of like-mindedness, and, and you will flourish in the house of the Lord. God, the Christian New Testament knows no Christian without a church. You say, I'm a Christian, but I don't have a home. God calls you home today. We'll, we'll, I'll be glad to serve as your pastor. And, and the ministers here will be glad to serve as a minister to speak to your life and hold you accountable and pray with you and walk through hell and back. If you're here and you fit one of those four categories and you want to come down, I want you to come down. Today is a wonderful day for you to be either saved, rededicated, or filled with the Holy Spirit, or join this wonderful church, thriving church, right here in Perth and Boy. Is there one? Praise God. Well, join me standing as we pray. I'm going to pray a general prayer. I'm going to pray that your love will continue to grow more and more into that perfect day. Philippians chapter 1. Lift up your hands as a sign of surrender. Father, I thank you for your people. It was an honor to serve them today. The anointing is not for me to say I'm anointed. It is for your people. It is for the world. And I thank you that this anointing to love Jesus regardless of their circumstances will continue to increase. I pray that their love will grow more and more with discernment until the perfect day. I pray, Father, that you would cause their love for you to continue to grow. May they not love money more than they love you. May they not ever love money, but may they only love people in you. Father, I pray that you will continue to increase that love May that love be pure and sincere. Oh, God, I pray that they will, they will be without, um, Lord, that whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the perfect, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May they stand in that day and say, Father, I love you, and I thank you, and I, I, I serve you wholeheartedly regardless of my financial status. And as a result of their love for you and their faith in you, I thank you that you will push them into wealth that you, Spirit of living God, that you will qualify all of us to be wealthy for your glory, for the glory of the Father in Jesus. I pray that we will become wealthy, first and foremost, spiritually, second, naturally. Lord, I thank you that you have redeemed us from toil. What causes men and women to stress and, and to strive, that striving for for that bag. I thank you. There will be no stress, no struggle, no, no strain. That it will be easy to get wealthy for your glory. 
God, it will be so easy. That grace, grace makes all of it easy, God. And I thank you, Father. I thank you that, yes, we do have to do our part, but I thank you that that anointing for wealth will be upon us and we'll have strategies and we'll have wisdom and we'll have God ideals to grow in wealth for the glory of God, that we'll become wealthy on the inside first and then it'll show up on the outside. Thank you, Lord. I'm speaking to some millionaires in the making. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for the, lift up your hands. I I sense that anointing. I thank you right now, Father, that you are causing concepts and ideas to to grow in them, to be planted. That thing that you have placed inside of them, I pray they'll walk towards it. Those gifts and those graces, I pray that they'll work their grace, they'll work their land, and there'll be plenty upon their life. Oh, God, I thank you that they'll leave leave this life better than they came into it. (laughs) Oh, glory to God, that their letter will be greater than the former. Yeah, yeah, you might, have been, you might have been born to poverty, but you'll leave as a wealthy person. That's the word I got. You'll leave as a wealthy person. If you'll obey and follow him who is on the inside of you, he'll lead you into that wealthy place. And he'll, you'll have some for your children and your children's children. But above all, you go after Jesus and grow in that faith and pass that faith down and that wealth will be secondary. The world is seeking wealth. You seek Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom. Come on, let's, let's, let's thank God for wisdom as it relates to the wealth. Wisdom. Wisdom, first and foremost, to seek you. And wisdom to, go, to have the wealth that you called us to. There is a wealthy place. There is a place of wealth for you, reserved before the foundations of the earth, a place of wealth that you will be, that that your wants will be, your wants will be destroyed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now hear the scriptures, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Things, things, things will be added to you. Add it to you. And then I not say I'm the Lord that multiplies and I, he's going to multiply you great. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he'll make you great before the people. If you'll follow after him and make him your priority, make him your everything, make him the center of your life, make him your all in all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And you may say, um, Pastor, I, I, I don't have it. I don't even have enough to meet the regular bills, and you're talking about wealth. But I say to you, seek first. First the kingdom, and the things that you need will be a thing of the past. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Everything you need is in him. Everything you need is in him. All the wisdom that you need to go from paycheck to paycheck to more than enough is in him. Everything you need, you may be in a land of not enough, but he's a land of more than enough. Make him your land. Make him your object. Make him your focus. Thank you, Lord. And he, by by his spirit, will lead you into the things that is needed for you to fulfill your assignment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. That concludes this week's message, and thank you very much for listening. For more information about Kingdom Living Ministries, please call us at 732-324-2200 or visit our website at kingdomlivingnj.org. Also, you can write to us by mail at P.O. Box 519, Rancocas, New Jersey. 08073. And lastly, if you would like to partner with this ministry through your prayers or financial support, contact us via email at partners at kingdomlivingnj.org. Our prayer is that this message has encouraged you to live out the kingdom of God daily in your life by your obedience to His Word. God bless you.